Welcome back to Miked Up. Um, we are excited to bring back the Jay Johnson Wednesdays. Obviously, last week they had a regional. That's three different teams to prepare for. There's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, you know, Coach would not be here where, where he is right now without the preparation. But as he promised us last week that he'd be back on this week, and they, they go ahead and they swept the regional last week. Now they can move on to the Super Regional. Coach, I appreciate you for joining the show. I appreciate you for leaving team dinner a little early to come and give us some attention. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm just trying to get some positive national championship vibes. There we go. There we go. There we go. This is your first. This is your first super regional in Baton Rouge. Last year, obviously, y'all didn't host one here in in in, uh, in Baton Rouge. Y'all get to host it this year. Um, the crowd throughout the course of the year has been electric. What are you looking forward to uh, this weekend? Well, I know they're going to show up because uh, regional final at a one o'clock on a Monday. Yeah. Uh, I love how everybody missed work and uh, make your hat tip to our fans for that. That was awesome. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I am hard, I'm sad to say that I was not at that game. We were actually doing a live stream here for the game, so we were watching it, obviously. Um, but during the regional, you know, obviously uh, there's a bunch of questions. There's a bunch of things that you're going to do. But what I noticed the most – especially early on in the regional was um, the way that I felt like y'all executed the actual like baseball plays as far as moving guys over, getting guys in, you know, obviously, you know, Paul does what Paul does and he went nine innings and it was, was unbelievable. But throughout the course of the weekend, it felt like y'all played very complimentary baseball as far as, you know, moving guys over and getting them in. Is that something that you saw? And is that something that you stressed moving towards, uh, the postseason. Yeah, for sure. You guys know this. Playing in the postseason, everything is magnified, and you obviously want to take advantage of your chances. Uh, we've done a great job at getting leadoff guys on, and we've done a great job with getting guys in from third with, with less than two outs, those types of things. But uh, we really went hard at work on just a few things last week that we needed to do better from the, the previous weeks and uh, came out and played very well. I mean, score seven runs with no home runs. Uh, we knew Tulane was going to be a tough game. They had a good pitcher on, on Friday. They had a couple good interesting pieces out of the bullpen, and we really wanted to settle into the postseason, and there's no better way to do that with Paul. And then, you know, the offense executed. I, I looked up at one point, and we had traded six of our outs, but four runs scored on six of those outs. And uh, that's usually a pretty good formula, and guys did a nice job getting us off to a good start there. Um, you know, obviously you've, you've gotten a – I guess a first-hand look at how, I guess, bipolar the Louisiana weather is. You know, the first two games, there was no weather. Ended up becoming weather. The last game on Monday had all kinds of weather. Ended up being no weather. Um, you, had to, you had to navigate through some rain delays. You had to navigate through some cancellations and moving. Um, what went into the behind-the-scenes, right? Did you leave that up to the players? Like, what, did, what went in with those rain delays? Because it seems like after they came out of that first rain delay um, – on, on Sunday, they came out and the offense kind of flipped the switch. Was that more of a internal thing with the players? Or was that more of something that y'all had kind of talked about behind the scenes uh, during those three hours? No, we actually met twice during that time. And, you know, the first two innings, we actually did a lot of things right to set the table and to get the bases loaded. Um, took some really high quality at bats against a guy that if you weren't locked in on your plan, he could he could make it tough on you, and he he did a good job in the second inning, wiggling out of a bases loaded one out by striking out Tommy, and then getting Trey to ground out. But we were on track in in terms of, of how we roll. I was at over 50 pitches through two innings, and just to kind of resettle them in and just like keep going because instead of focusing on not getting a two out hit in the first inning, where Gavin actually hit the ball really hard at the shortstop. Um, on a 3-1 pitch, so you, you can't fault them for that. You know, then we just we didn't get anybody in in the second inning, but we, we kind of preached the message we're right on track, so stay with it. We knew they were going to make pitching changes. We felt like we had a good pulse on their pitchers and what they were going to do, and so we were just kind of trying to set the stage for that. And Big two-strike hit by Josh Pearson ended up being a triple, and then Dylan's home run kind of got us going. And then I thought from that point forward, you know, the back half of, of that game and then Monday's game, we, we played great offense. I'm glad you mentioned Pearson, right? Because we've talked, me and you have talked off the show, on the show about Josh Pearson, and you've been very high on him. You've, you've been a fan of his since he's got to LSU. He was a very 
you know, big part of the lineup last year. This year he kind of got off to a slow start, and some other guys played really well early on, so his playing time started to diminish. And then you look at him now, and now he is one of the biggest contributors right now in the lineup. Clutch hits, great at bats. I feel like every time he's up to the plate, it's a professional at bat, and he's making these guys work. I feel like he's a perfect fit with this lineup in the nine hole. I feel like he almost completes this, this lineup. Is that something that you've seen, and are you proud with his progression? Are you proud with the way he's stuck with you know, what he was trying to do throughout the course of the season. Yeah, I, I love Josh and have a lot of confidence in Josh. And he performed very well last year as a freshman in SEC play, which is really hard to do. There's a steep learning curve between high school baseball and what players have to do to be successful in this conference. And the only reason he wasn't playing a little more early is we have a really good team and right. talented guys were playing a little bit better. But, you know, I just trust him. You know, I put him in at the beginning of play and we won two out of three at Texas A&M, won two out of three at home against Arkansas and Tennessee and he had a lot to do with it during those series and then the last weekend at Georgia, uh, kind of the same type of thing and it just felt like now it's, now it's his time and, and to be in there, feel good about that and um, very confident and comfortable with what he gives us and brings to the table. Coach, I'm just kind of checking in, we had a little technical <laughs> difficulties on this side, I couldn't really hear you at first in the headphones. But might be my fault. Speaking of proud, I'm I'm literally just going to throw out two things right here, and I, I would like you to speak on it. Five innings, twelve punches. Can you just talk about that guy a little bit right now? Superstar, um, stud. I've I've known it the whole time, and you know I had a a rough start. I believe it was against Arkansas and Tennessee. But if you strip those back, this is a pretty dang good season he's had. And um, I think that got lost maybe because of a couple tough outings. And when you see him pitch, you can see the stuff. And it was just a matter of time and sticking with it. Uh, we adjusted a couple things with him. Um, I don't know when that would have been, probably mid-conference. And since then, you're looking at nine of the last ten outings have been really, really good. Yeah. And, and I was going to uh, get – oh, that, sorry. Sorry, keep going. Sorry. No, it's okay. I was going to ask you, like, no. you talked about some of the adjustments, right? And I was going to ask, like, what, what went into – those things, because it feels like, you know, as a player, I know that when I'm trying to figure something out at the plate and I feel that adjustment and I feel, okay, this is what clicked, my confidence level shoots to the roof because I knew something was off and now I don't feel like anything is off. It almost, it feels like that's kind of what he's going through right now. Is there, I don't know if you want to disclose what was going on, but is, what, what was exactly that something that y'all needed to fix or tweak or, you know, get him right with? Yeah, I just think he he's done a much better job of of making uh, pitch to pitch adjustments and getting himself back into mentally and physically, and then he executes a lot better. And with his stuff, if he execute pitches, the hitters out. And matter of fact, they're probably going to strike out like Oregon State did twelve times. <laughs> and I think he's understanding uh, how good he is. He had a great outing in Hoover for us uh, in that win against South Carolina. And for me, that's the norm now. It's it's not a not a surprise to me at all. And uh, that's why we put him in. We're down 1-0 with seven chances to score runs uh, with our offense on a day where we thought the ball was going to carry and be good for us. And so we needed a pitcher that could miss bats. And Thatcher misses bats and um, feel like he's in just such a great space. And that was a big-time performance. And, you know, I kind of wanted to send him back out for the ninth, but he had given us everything that he'd had. And, you know, when you punch out 12 guys, that pitch count's going to get up there a little bit. But uh, he's shown he can withstand that, getting through the order three and four times, and uh, we're in a great spot with him. And really proud of him, and, and honestly, the best is yet to come for him, and that's really exciting. Speaking of going back out in the ninth and speaking of studs, uh, he does not did not go back out for the ninth, but you brought in Gavin Guidry, and I'm, he's my favorite player, I think, outside of Dylan <laughs> Cruz on the team. Just based off of what he does, how he approaches – just the mound, it's just it's it's unbelievable. It's fun to watch, and it, it looks like he's 25 pitching in college instead of 18. Uh, can you talk a little bit about him? Yeah, I'll just sum it up like this. So <laughs> after the the deal on Monday, he poked his head in my office and he goes, "Coach, it doesn't matter who's calling the pitches. I'm striking everybody out." Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> have a good have a good have a good night. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> I love that, and you need that in your closer. You need that. Yeah. that that's one where he walked yeah. out and you're like. I'm okay with this guy. Yeah. I think I'm good with him. That's my guy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Coach, I think, uh, you know, watching through the course of the year from where the year started to 
the down period, if you will, I think what gets lost really, really easily is how productive he was when he wasn't six for three every day, right? But now that he's gotten back into a good swing, whether it was this weekend or honestly a couple of days before, the couple of games before that, can you point to an at bat over the last maybe two weeks where when you watch Dylan hit again, you're like, it's here. Like, I don't, it may not have been a hit. It may not have been a ball. It may have been a foul ball. Can you point to an at bat or a specific time over the last two weeks, where whatever, where you felt like it's coming back right now? Yeah, he had a great week leading up to the regional. I think it was good for him to to just get a reset. And then just his body language walking in the box in the first inning on Friday, I was like, we're good. And then yeah. single, and I was like, yeah, we're really we're in a good spot. And yeah. uh, then he big two out hit his second at bat, and um, yeah, he's 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 special. And uh, he just set a bar so high that you know, let's call it a little bit of a rough spot or whatever you called it. Exactly, would not be. A for any other player no. in the country it just you only notice it because of how good he is and um this weekend was was truly indicative of who he is as a player and that was that was awesome to see and changes the game for us he's like i said he, he doesn't come around very often i mean he doesn't show he's a very even keel guy he doesn't show a ton of emotion um but after he hit that home run the two-run home run that kind of put you all back in the game he showed more emotion on the field than I had ever seen him in three years. And to me, like that one that fired me up and two, like it's got to be fired. It's got to fire the team up to say, oh, damn, this is our leader. He doesn't normally do that. And it's, it, it, and he did, and he did it right. It's a lot of frustration came out. It was a lot of motivation. Uh, it was just really fun to see. And so like, you know, to your point, he's a superstar, but that had to be pretty cool to see him actually show some of that emotion. Yeah. We, we kind of had an unfortunate inning right after the, the, we picked the game back up. A guy hit a home run. No, it's credit to him. It was an opposite field home run, but it Wind felt like kind of like a wind blown. Yeah, it was like 96 <laughs> coming in and it was only 90 going out and it went over the fence. It was really weird. Um, and then, you know, we were almost about ready to wiggle our way out of a, a jam and Jordan made a nice play to get to the ball and try to make a tough throw to the plate and then they scored one there. But then we came back, Josh hit the triple, Dylan hit the, hit the homer, and then Thatcher went out and got a zero. And then Travinsky and Beloso hit the back-to-back homers, and it was like, okay, like we're in a good spot. And th- these guys just take good at bats. They took good at bats all of Friday. They took good at bats before the rain delay. It was just with them. It's just a matter of time, and it's just a matter of holding the game close. And um, we did all of those things really well. The offense helped the defense, pitching helped the defense, and helped the offense. It was just really good uh, complimentary team baseball. Coach, being tasked with the the job that you have. Um, I got to imagine that's probably one of the more fulfilling things or cool feelings it is. I don't think people realize the different places and the different things you have to see and and be, I guess, on note of during a game. But like you said, watching Dylan walk to the plate and how he walked to the plate is when you knew things would be different. Can you speak on that feeling and that side as a coach for you and how it is being able to see those things and kind of being able to move forward with stuff like that? Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, again, like he gets a lot of credit. He's a finalist for the Golden Spikes along with Paul, which both of them deserve that. And that's awesome. And that's the highest trophy of college baseball. So this this is a big deal to have two of the three guys finals from finalists from LSU. And, uh, you know, I just I appreciate him so much because the talent is easy to see the work ethic, the lead up to the the, the week, the self-awareness of what he needs to do. I mean, this is all like next level special. And then that rubs off on his teammates, and then they want to do better because of him. And then, you know, the mental game part of it is what I've always, you know, spoken to about him. Like, I mean, he does so much to keep himself locked in. And, yeah, he got hit in the mouth a little bit the last couple of weeks, and then it's just the ability to turn on the right mindset, the right motor, and uh, and go for it and get into it is, is awesome. And he, and he did it in a way that kind of only he can. And, and that's very gratifying. To, to see that because he, he does it the right way coach like i know you have a lot of work to do i just have a couple questions i know you're about to dive into the uh to kentucky y'all played them earlier in the year uh the games they, they, y'all took two out of three from them but uh that sunday game was was pretty tight and you know it got i got a little chippy throughout the course of the weekend it feels like watching kentucky um through their regional they are a little bit of a different team than they were. They obviously they, they play small ball. They they do those th- types of things really well. 
but their pitching staff is a little different. I feel like the three guys that have been starting over the course of the last couple of weeks are not the same guys that y'all had faced earlier. And I feel like in their in their regional, they hit the ball with a little bit more thump. Um, what have you seen with this Kentucky team compared to what you saw with them earlier in the year? They do a really good job of they understand who they are, both from the mound and on offense. And they do the things that they do really well and have a really good plan. And uh, a good plan is one you're, you're willing to lose with. You know what I mean? And, right. and you have to be that committed to it. And, and they are that type of team. It's a really old team. Um, that a lot of those pitchers have been there for a while and have kind of come into their own. They did a really nice job in the transfer portal, you know, picking the right type of guys. And they're playing a, a really good style of baseball. And so I don't see it, you know, much differently than when we played them the last time. Going into that series, I knew it would be a challenging series. It was a gratifying series win when we won our one-run game on uh, game three. Or I think it was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday yeah. because we knew it was a quality team. And, you know, just as, it's kind of one of those intuition things. Like you get to this round as an SEC coach, you almost – you feel like you got about a 50% chance of playing a conference opponent in the super regional. And right. I just kind of had in my mind, we would, we would see them again and, and not surprised by it. Cause they're a really good team. Um, for the people who showed up that weekend and or watched the, that weekend on, on TV, is there anyone that they have inserted as far as for either, like you said, on the mound or in the lineup that we didn't really see that much back in the beginning of the sec schedule when we saw them? Yeah, they they use they used all their pitchers that weekend. Like we basically saw everybody, but like they have a good template of what they're trying to do and how they line guys up. They're lining them up a little differently than they did, but we saw everybody. And and the lineup has been pretty consistent, you know, throughout the year with a bunch of, of old players. Um, well, coach, I appreciate your time as always. I'm glad that we got you back on here. We are going to be at the box this weekend. We avoided Lloyd having any conversation with you today. That's uh, not true. That's, uh, we put your, him on mute. Who's your weather guy? Excuse me? I said, who's your weather guy? You said you got under never... sources. Yeah, you never give them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. They stay, they, stay, they, stay, they stay underground. That's, it. That's, good. That's a good man. Who's your weather guy? That's a good man. Um, we'll be in the box this weekend. We're going to have a nice little mic'd up tailgate before the game on Saturday. And uh, looking forward to watching y'all play. Good luck this weekend. And... Um, See you, see you in Omaha. See you at the box and see you in Omaha. Good luck this weekend, Coach. Good luck, Coach. All right. Sounds great, guys. Yep. Thanks. Thanks.